Greetings, everyone, and welcome to IPM's Friday virtual forum. Uh, today, this first Friday in the month of June, um, we're glad to be back with all of you after taking last Friday off for the holiday weekend here in the United States. And this week, we're excited to share with you um, some updates and really a, a wonderful review of IPM's work throughout the pandemic uh, by Aneda Ramos, who's our coordinator of research and resource mobilization. Um, she's really gonna talk specifically about measuring the impact of IPM's work through quantitative analysis. And Aneda is relatively new to the IPM staff. It's actually, it'll be two years and a few months, uh, but she's been a wonderful addition to our leadership team and works out of our office in El Salvador and has been working alongside Ilsa Fender and myself in particular in helping us provide more detailed quantitative analysis of the impact of IPM's work, particularly from our regional offices and in collaboration with our project partners around the world through funding, technical assistance and training, regional conferences, bilateral gatherings, facilitation of that kind of sharing, um, and the support directly of our partners from each of those regional offices. We're glad to have a, a number of the members of the regional staff on today's Zoom call. And so as always, we would invite them and you to join in our conversation. And Ada will lead us through this uh, presentation and you should certainly feel welcome on Facebook or Zoom to type any question or comment you have into the chat function and we'll share that um, at the conclusion of her presentation and do the best that we can to answer any questions or comments you might have. I also want to take just a moment to acknowledge my colleague uh, Ilsa Fender, who is IPM Senior Director of Constituent Relations and has also served as my executive assistant for quite a number of years now. Uh, tomorrow she'll be celebrating her 15th anniversary with IPM. Uh, there's something about us beginning in June, both her and I began this month, uh, five years and three days apart, it appears, and none of what I've accomplished and certainly IPM has accomplished over the past 15 years would have been possible without Ilsa's remarkable dedication and commitment to this organization. She is in many ways the heart of IPM. Uh, she's certainly the person that keeps me on task and focus on details and uh, has been a wonderful partner of mine, the board, um, the wider staff, and all of our project partners around the world, many of whom she's had the opportunity to visit personally over the past 15 years. And I know she looks forward to doing more of that as we're all able to travel again. So thank you, Ilsa, um, for all that you do. Um, and thank you, Aneda, for the hard work you put into putting this presentation together today. So I'll turn it over at this time uh, to my colleague, Aneda, and look forward to our conversation this morning. Thank you so much, Joe, for your introduction. And uh, I feel happy to be here with you, uh, sharing with you a little bit of the work that our project partners are doing in the regions where they are. And I hope that uh, uh, that you can that you can make your comments or suggestions at any time. Uh, so I'm going to start. Uh, COVID nineteen has brought um, multiple challenges around the world and has profounded and shown the inequities between women and men between poor and rich, and between castes, us is live in, in India. Today, I want to talk about the situation in regards to gender, economic and food security, and children's education in El Salvador, Nicaragua, Colombia, India, and Kenya, and how our project partners uh, cope with this situation with the support and accompaniment of the IPM staff and the support that all of our donors and friends do, because without uh, their contribution, wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to reach uh, each 
community, village, or region where our presence is. Yeah, I want to start with El Salvador. And last year, as you can see in the gender and COVID-19 topic, um, El Salvador faced uh, board and care. Um, as you can see in this graph, uh, women dedicated more time to household course in comparison with men. Also, sexual violence and femicides increased, even though women were in their own houses. El Salvador closed the economy. And nobody couldn't go out freely. Um, uh, this brought in consequences uh, job insecurity and violations of labor rights. Uh, companies decided to suspend salaries, other uh, declared bankruptcy, leaving many uh, people without financial support. Uh, the situation brought food crisis uh, for those who work in informal sector or farmers or micro enterprises and children were the most affected because they, uh, a lot of uh, students didn't have access to technology and because they were like left without a, any contact with others. Um, and so uh, education failed in, in some way. Uh, faced with this situation, um, IPM uh, and its project partners have continued to work for the well-being of the specific regions where we are present. In El Saite, uh, the Patronato Lidia Cogiola during the lockdown provided food bags to more than 200 families in the community. The Women Collective from Zaragoza, which is a program from El Patronato, decided to start a cocoa production a project to generate income for themselves and their families. In recognition of the group's entrepreneurial spirit and progress, IPM provided an additional $500 donation to expand their project. Also, El Patronato a work with 15 young people in the Tu Decides program where they learn about uh, gender and sexual and reproductive rights. The um, uh, preschool teachers, you know, Martira and Sandra, continue to teach in constant communication and work with parents so that the children could finish their school year despite the challenges of access to technology for both the teachers and students. IPM donated uh, three computers to the Rainforest Computer Learning um, for the kids who attend the after-school program. Uh, in Nacomujerza, they are located in Zaragoza. Uh, during uh, last year, uh, 34 people received support from IPM with basic food baskets, including associates, collaborators, and older adults in the community. 16 people benefited, were benefited with, uh, no, from a pandemic health project through the purchase of medicine and specialty consultations for the total amount of 960. And Edith, um they work in, in food sovereignty projects. And during the, the pandemic, IDAS started a chicken project to offset food insecurity with seed money from IPM. The initiative is coordinated by four young, uh, for, for, by four youth and benefits their extended families and community. IPM also supported uh, the repair of the outdoor shelter area used for teaching and cultural activities and the roof of the IDES office. IPM provided 16, uh, 60 food baskets for those affected during quarantine. This year, uh, we were able to support a new group of women made up of four members of different families and they are currently raising 15 chickens with which they plan to feed their families and have more income. 
um, Acapamu, eh, you know, mus Musas Creativas in Armenia. Um, in December eh, last year, IPM delivered food basket for the four women leaders of the cooperative in assorted bags of clothing for the community. IPM also sent eh, seven $100 to alleviate a different needs identified by ACAPAMU and IPM's regional, as, uh, identified by ACAPAMU and IPM's regional staff. In Nutra Vida in San Ramon, IPM donated um, last year uh, $200 uh, that were used to include powered meal in the food baskets to support for hundred local families. And besides that, they also deliver around 300 masks inside different communities. Now I want to move to Nicaragua. And um, in here, in Nicaragua, as you can see in this um, information, um, the go well, the firstly, uh, the government decided not to take any actions against the spread of COVID-19, but uh, the global economic situation affected women and food security, as you can see in this graph. In 2020, um, 90,000 people uh, were in poverty, and by the end of this year is expected 172,000 people without employment. And, and also femicides increase, as you can see here in the topic gender and COVID-19. Uh, 71 women were murdered and until March this year um, were uh, 19 femicides and 411 attempted femicides. And how are we working in this uh, to, to avoid or to prevent or against this situation? Well, we have our project partner in Seprosi. And uh, Seprosi, uh, which is located in Indiri, IPM accompanied the project and provided humanitarian assistance with the delivery of food packages valued at, at to uh, $20 per family, in addition uh, to medical assistance and an amount of $100 that was del delivered to nine women for the reactivation of their micro enterprises initiatives. There was an expansion of the Rotative Collective Fund program from three communities to five, and the lack of staff supported the project in the emotional aspects providing two workshops around mental health topics with the main objective of providing tools to the participants to deal with the stress, injury, and depression. And the second place uh, is uh, San Francisco Libre. We have this project partner, Mujer y Comunidad. One of their biggest achievements in 2020 was granting micro loans for 34 women and youth. In to, uh, uh, this year, IPM is especially focused on providing material and technical support to the youth outreach program. And now in Colombia, uh, school dropouts have increased, as you can see in this graph, the, the, the first, which is called Children Education and COVID-19, and more children require mental health due to the effects of COVID-19. Uh, I found this um, research about uh, this survey about the emotional states of children, which I consider is really important to know. And, and you can see uh, that lockdowns affected children a lot. Um, and also in regards to the economy um, situation, which is in, is in crisis, we see a high number of children working and right here. And, and this situation of women is also critical 
37 femicides were registered between January and February this year and 8,000 femicides of domestic violence last year. Um, our impact uh, in, in Colombia, uh, we are working in Ibagué. We have uh, our project partner, Centro de Formación para la Paz, and the center has expanded its beneficiaries population since the end of uh, last year, as they work alongside with a new community called La Vereda, uh, which is like in English, it will be the sidewalk. And the work has expanded to 44 children and more than 20 women in that location. IPM provided funding to the center for the preparation of two manuals, one entitled the project of my life and the other focus on entrepreneurship. These manuals provided the children uh, from the center in La Vedreda the, capaci the capacity to know themselves better, create aspirational goals and develop new tools to uh, grow in many life areas. Through Ser Mujer, which is the second program uh, of El Centro de Formación para la Paz, the work with women in La, Veder in La Verera has promoted a new women's collective where they plan activities together that focus on the empowerment of each woman. And during the pandemic, the focus of their activities has been related to food so sovereignty, family gardens, education, self-care and entrepreneurship. And I want to add that IPM Latin America region staff continues to communicate with the project partners in the region. Also, the staff has conducted different workshops related to institutional threatening, self-care, and organizational and identity to promote and, and foster a sense of belongings be within an organization specifying the qualities and capabilities of each member. Now I want to move to, to India. Uh, we see a clear gap be, uh, between men and women um, where women don't have access to education or technology and are suffering at the hands of abusive partners. Uh, girls are married before 18 and, and many families don't have money in consequences, they experience a, redu a reduction food intake and 75 um, million people are living in poverty and probably by the end of this year, the number might increase because all of the situation that is India is facing right now. Our fellows uh, in Golana uh, is, in is increasingly vital IPM prior partner. 2020 uh, has witnessed many disruption in its activity to do the impact of COVID-19. And as a member-based organization working in more than 27 villages with more than 3,000 women and 7,000 children, the demands on IPM's inaugural fellow, Himat, and our new fellow, uh, Bindia Magwana, it had been tremendous. And um, their activities span from mobilizing women and accessing government services to providing education to the little children and, and a space for them to learn and play. Our fellow uh, Bindia um, gave a workshop on violence to 40 children between the ages of 12 and 22 through recreational activities. And she provided a menstrual hygiene program with the participation of 500 women. The first session included the issues during the periods and the use of sanitary napkin. And second was about vaginal infections. IPM South Asia office, by this I mean Mahesh, has, has conducted five trainings for youth group and teachers. Topics included motivation training, education methods, organizing and organization development, among others. 
and in Ahmedabad, whom uh, has aware has done awareness programs on domestic violence, harassment, and self defense training with the participation of one hundred forty five girls. And, and now I want to move to Kenya, and the reality in Kenya during last year was tough. As you can see, 47% of people uh, live in informal settlements. 2.2 million jobs were lost, lost as a result of the economic shutdown. And domestic violence increased. Unpaid care partners are elevated, which makes them, uh, which makes uh, women uh, vulnerable or dependent on their male partners. Uh, fem female genital mutilation continue, uh, for example, in Kuria village, despite its prohibition. And education was in crisis. Um, 289 girls ages uh, 10 to 14 became pregnant between January and September last year, and five. 1,717 girls ages uh, 15 to 19 became pregnant during the same period. And 300,000 children dropped out of school and 1,000 school girls became sex workers in Nairobi. And that are project partners in Kiveria, Dandora, and Kandula Village are working very hard. And I want to start talking about Kandula Village. Uh, the Kandula Community Project continues to serve the Kamba people. And during the pandemic, schools closed and, um, and a lot of people lost their jobs. Uh, but the local population was especially grateful for the continued accessibility of treated groundwater made possible by IPM's infrastructure investment within the community and additional funding to finalize the building of the schools, for example, eight uh, classrooms, latrines, and related facilities. Approximately 700 families, each with six or seven members, are impacted. A 420 youth at the nearly a completely um, the primary school at Mary Goretti, and 40 young children at the nursery as school are benefited, constructed with funded from IPM between 2009 and 2019. And also 23 women um, participating in the women's group focus on microenterprises stream. In Watoto Walanga, a, a total of 209 students are enrolled in primary school attending without problems. Throughout uh, that period, students have participated in inter-class discussions, word puzzles, spelling bees, and activities focused on water sanitation and hygiene. Three people uh, with disabilities were recruited into the skills program as part of the Watoto Walanga initiatives for more inclusive education. Uh, throughout Kenya, IPM project partner Jacinta Wairimu Kiarie of Watoto Walanga has been supporting with uh, has been supporting IPM with project partner outreach during the pandemic. And uh, finally, in Dandora, the women are trained um, on different uh, skills by different trainings or workshops that they develop there. For example, entrepreneurship, personal hygiene, early pregnancy, and drugs in youth, and peace and tribalism. Um, also, the forum has been carrying out microfinancial operations that generate a little income for the members, and the surplus is channeled to other projects. As for health awareness, the forum raises health consciousness by sensitizing the community on the 
uh, HIV, AIDS, home-based care, first aid skills, training behavioral change, and self-awareness. This is how the forum uh, trains women to be community health um, workers. And now I want to, to conclude by saying that uh, I, I, what I try to, to show with this presentation is that our project partners are doing a great job in their uh, specific areas. And all of this is thanks to your support and the support of all the staff. Uh, and probably uh, we are not impacting, you know, like in, in, in a countrywide where we are doing great things and we are impacting in people's life in each region, village, and um, in, in that specific territory where our present presence is. And I want to, to close with this quote from Monsignor Romero and say again that IPM and its project partners impact every community or village and the number of population it reaches is quite a lot. The struggle for peace is reflected in every donor, friend, fellow, a staff and project partner coordinator. Despite the difficulties, we continue to fight for peace, solidarity and justice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anita. Um, that was wonderful even for me to see again in that level of detail, even though you and I have these conversations, it seems like almost daily <laughs> uh, over the past few months, especially. And um, I found it particularly telling that you quoted from Romero, but talking about peace at the end of your presentation, uh, you did not see the uh, appeal and update that we sent out uh, last week to IPM's partners and friends around the United States and in Europe, our donors in particular. And I ended with a line on um, related to peace as well. So I think we're both, we're clearly thinking about the same things as we reemerge from the pandemic and learn more and more about the work of our partners and particularly benefit from this really exciting quantitative analysis that you're able to do and you're bringing to the IPM family through your work um, in El Salvador and around the world. So I want to open it up to um, everyone now. There are a number of folks on the call um, from countries as diverse as Nepal and El Salvador, India and alike. And um, I would invite you, the United States obviously as well, I would invite you if you have any questions at this point to um, share them. Uh, if you're on Zoom, you can simply unmute yourself uh, and share your presentation or share your question directly in relation to Anita's presentation or any other questions or comments you might have about what she's just shared. Um, I'm sorry that I'm multitasking. I'm looking at the chat function uh, as well as um, trying to facilitate the conversation. Um, I know that Clint has just said, um, Thank you again, Anita, for the presentation, and thanks especially to Ilsa for her 15 years of service um, and ongoing work with the IPM family. So why don't I open it up at this point for any comment, comments, clarifications, or questions that anyone else would like to add? We have about 15 minutes, I believe. I think I'd like to <clears throat> jump right in uh, just quickly, if I could, to, to thank Anita for the presentation and Joe for his input as well. I think as Joe has said, um, we can clearly see why we're so excited to have Anita as part of our IPM family and the incredible talent and commitment that she brings to really being able to quantify the impact um, that our partners have and that IPM, through all of your continued generosity and support, um, enable IPM to impact the impact of our partners, if that makes sense. But we are so incredibly grateful to have this new way of um, really communicating what um, the impact has been through your support. And um, I know that personally, and, and I'm glad that I'm not on screen because I can get very emotional about 
um, Joe's acknowledgement of my um, 15 year anniversary, I want to just echo my gratitude to Joe for his 20 years. Um, I have been truly blessed to be part of the IPM family in ways that I could never even verbalize. You know, the inspiration that our partners show, you know, for empowering individuals and in their communities and to make a positive difference in the lives of so many people. We're a small nonprofit organization, but we have had such a huge impact over the years. You know, it's, it's, I know Carol Finling and I talked about that earlier this week, how, you know, we don't have the large numbers of, you know, incredibly um, large organizations, but we're making differences in people's lives in a personal direct way that continues to ripple out. And we will never know the magnitude of lives that we have truly impacted, you know, because it just continues to, you know, um, expand in ways that we'll never know. Um, so thank you all for, for being part of the IPM family, for the, for the continued dedication um, for all that you enable for our partners, we are so incredibly grateful to you all. Thank you. I would also like to jump in and just congratulate Anita um, for the wonderful presentation you shared with us today and also um, for all the work you put into gathering information. I think Jill has said it time and time again and I couldn't agree more. Um, you are amazing when it comes to investigating and gathering information and putting it in a way that everyone can understand. You know, I admire you so much. I think you're a brilliant person in 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 a way that it's so natural to you. Um, I love. I would also like to to praise that. So thank you so much for your presentation, Nada. And also, um, I would like to congratulate Ilse. Um, you know, you are a light for most of us. I know that Nada and I and Adela wouldn't do anything. <laughs> If it wasn't for your help, Ilse, so thank you so much for your always good disposition and for your kind for your kind guidance and, and patience. So thank you so much. And any I'm not sure, but I think Carol left the question in the chat, I think. Can someone read the, the chat? I'm not able to see that. Yeah, Mahesh, Mahesh has just shared in India around 3 million regular jobs were lost again in April 2021. So that's 3 million jobs in a month. Moreover, unlike the first wave, rural supply chains are impacted because farmers and cultivators are also infected. That was from Mahesh. Elsa, the, the questions in the chat uh, are, uh, can, do we have an idea of the total of uh, people reached or affected by IPM programs? Uh, just in El Salvador alone, Carol asked. And then uh, Mark asked uh, a similar question. Have, have we ever tallied all the people reached by IPM programs? And I'm not sure that we have, but uh, somebody might have an idea about that. Thank you for for your questions, and for me, it's it's a homework that I have to do. <laughs> I didn't I didn't uh, think uh, about that, but it, it's really good to 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 really count the you know to to sum up uh, all the population that we are supporting, like in in a more general way. I did this only by. Um, uh, by the specific region where we are uh, working. 
and that well I have homework but I, I will definitely uh, bring you with the total amount by a next opportunity. Good. And thank you, Anita. I can add um, for those more generally, um, historically, and I, I'll say um, begin, at the beginning of the, my tenure, we, we talked to Carol Michael better, but about um, 30,000, 25 to 30,000 people directly, not indirectly, but directly served each year. And then for most of my first decade, that number climbed to about, you know, pretty steadily to about 60,000. But because of our expanding work in India, uh, particularly in the state of Gujarat and around the community of Golana, um, we're saying that number is well over 100,000 now. And Mahesh has just tried, um, uh, let's see, typed into the chat function, 20, 27 villages uh, with diagnostic equipment like, yeah, this is just uh, oxygen meters, BP monitors, and blood sugar, and non-contact thermometers. Um, but, I, you know, we're, we've been using 100,000, 100,000 plus, uh, but as far as the number of people directly served, Indirectly, that number would obviously be greater, um, but it's quite a significant number. And I want to give credit particularly to Mahesh and Hemet India in India because of the expanded work there. A lot of you know, the new, order. of course, everything is, I joke that you can add a zero in India to almost anything when you're talking about number of people served, but certainly. Uh, the Pochabai Foundation alone um, is serving tens of thousands of people each year. Um, and Hemet is an IPM fellow, um, supporting his right in restricted capacity. So he's able to utilize those resources as he seems fit. Um, and India as well as the new junior fellow doing similar work, um, particularly with women and girls. And Mahesh might, I don't know if you can unmute yourself if you have a better sense um, of those numbers, but I know they're significant. And, it's, and as Anthony Nata said, that's more of the quantitative analysis we want. And Nate, I think you should know that um, there's also been some comments thanking you for this well, um, well prepared um, and confidently presented presentation. That was from Mark Shargell. Um, I think we all should remember that um, English is not Anita's mother. <laughs> And if I was doing this presentation in Spanish, I wouldn't have done nearly as well as, uh, as she does in English. Mahesh or Hemet, India, would any of you like to add anything from your content? Yeah, please add uh, Hemet and India because uh, there's a thunderstorm going on here and I can barely hear you all. Okay, yeah, I hear it in the background. But well, we can't get it. Yeah. Joe, I would like to add something. Yeah, please. Recently, uh, all of the villages have been appointed with a volunteer and they have been doing the health checkups every day almost. Uh, so if we uh, try to count it, uh, exact number I won't be able to say uh, as Similarly, like Canada, we haven't counted it one by one, but approximately uh, each village have done almost checkup till now. So if we count, multiply it by 27, uh, you can imagine that uh, till now we have uh, done several uh, checkups and along with that, we have also given advice to them which would not be possible without support of IPM. So thank you very much for doing that. Thank you, Bidia, for that added clarification. Could everyone hear her when she listed the numbers? Could you just say the number of people in each village? Again, Bindia, I think you broke down. Okay. I said uh, in all 27 villages, that is one volunteer for each village and they have been doing uh, checkups every day 
till now all uh, approximately every teacher or the volunteer have done at least 50 to 70 percent to uh, 70 people's checkup so uh, i might not get the exact number yeah no that help me it would be 27 to uh, 50 yeah it would be the minimum number right right and that's on a daily basis right that's daily yeah. that's daily so you can do the math and prepare 65 days a year 50 times 27 i should be able to do that uh, but you can do the math you're talking about a huge number uh, of india's work alone um, through her fellowship with ipm and and in partnership with hemet hemet can you you have the thunderstorm as well can you hear or would you like to add anything oh hello yes hello yes go yes. my uh, network is very uh, slow hello i yes, have a network hello we can hear you i have a network problem so i can uh... that's okay that we can can follow up can okay, add sure. yeah uh along with the number there is uh, one uh, particular comment which i would like to add here uh, for sure. the backups like uh, me or any of the volunteers uh, yesterday uh, we had a call with uh, mahesh bhai parveen and shahadat ji and we were discussing uh, what experiences and what feedback we get from people so except number there are uh, some more important things also uh, so whenever i go for the checkups uh, people have that confidence because of the reputation that the organization has uh, but again they have the doubt in their mind that uh, if we go and check the temperature or oxygen level uh, are we going to send the data to the government and they will like the uh, primary health center team or somebody from the medical team will come and take them to the hospital because there are so many rumors uh, so the first responsibility is to uh, give the confidence to the people that they are safe with us we can do the check up and we can recommend them some of the medi- uh, medicines or we can ask them to consult a doctor if required so it's not just the number we have to work hard for the impact which we want to see in the people around us thank you thank you bindia that's helpful and i i'm just looking trying to do simple math um if if there if just in the response during the past year to covid if we say count 350 days and obviously it's been more than a year and bindia is probably working every day but let's just say she works five or six days a week and the other volunteers so if the 27 villages times 50 people a day in each village times 350 days that's 472,500 people <laughs> 472,500 so as i said the uh, the 60,000 number that we use for many years um has really been overshadowed um geometrically if that's the right term um almost seven times um on an annual basis over the past couple of years as we've expanded fellowship model in India and that's part of the uh, you know I talked to a number of IPM friends and donors uh regularly and particularly over the last couple of years about why we're investing so deliberately in the fellowship program and this is really a a wonderful example of that in that providing those resources directly to individuals rather than having them constantly recreate a new initiative looking for funding like so many foundations ask them to do um allows them to just have a much greater impact again we're talking for at least 400,000 more people than we would have been having just a few years ago um There are a couple of other questions. Unfortunately, I can't look at the screen and look at the questions at the same time, so I'm sorry if my eye contact is a little weird. Uh but Carol is asking what can friends of IPM do to assist 
aside from financially? Can we connect with specific projects and maybe get local ser service foundations to provide something specific? Um, she knows maybe the Rotary as an example. They provide water filtration in specific, for specific locations. Um, and that IPM certainly shows that one small light can expand the world for millions. Um, certainly true. Our um, relationships with organizations like Rotary, or for example, in El Salvador, a strong relationship has developed with a couple of international schools, particularly the Escuela Alemán or the German school there. So if you have connections or suggestions around service organizations or schools, people you might know in the countries where we work, uh, if you could facilitate uh, getting that nation uh, directly to our regional offices, that would be a huge help. And um, I know that Adela uh, has recently received her vaccine, and I don't believe she's on the call right now, but um, that's something that she and I have been and um, the, building those community-based partnerships with other like-minded organizations is going to be a huge part of Fatima Pakas' portfolio with IPM when she comes back to work with us uh, later this month after two years of a Fulbright at the University of Albany um, in New York State. So Fatima in particular will be coordinating those efforts on an international basis in regional direct. Kenya and El Salvador, respectively. Um, there's also another comment from Sony, uh, anniversary and remembering with fondness the time together that you shared in Nepal. Um, Mahesh has also added that more than 50% in each village, so each of those 27 villages that Bindi has referred to, over 50% are affected by COVID. Heman and Bindia and all their families have worked at great personal risk to reach out and hold hands of the aged and those uh, who are fearful. Um, and we know that, and we certainly want to remember um, in particular, um, Hemet's, uh, members of Hemet's own family that have passed away recently. And I know of Bindia and Mahesh's extended family and network of friends and loved ones as well at this time. Um, Colleen, I see you on my screen. You don't join us <laughs> every week, but you've uh, you visited uh, India with me and we're in, in Maine in the last year, which was wonderful, a year and a half. Is there anything you'd like to ask or, or share? No, I just haven't had the opportunity to jump on, so I thought I would for a little bit. Um, Thank you. It's always good to see you. But no, uh, Peter and Tina and I got together for one of Peter's concerts in Cincinnati a few weeks ago. So that was nice. Great. Yeah, we're excited. Um, as you know, the Singing for Change Foundation is one of our generous donors, and that foundation has clearly been impacted by uh, the concert schedule or lack thereof. So we're excited on multiple fronts to see them back out on the road. And I know that. Jim Mayer was in touch with me yesterday about not being able to join us today um, as they gear up for I guess, the next leg of a little Buffett tour. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing them all and maybe even having uh, perform during the holiday season again here for IPM if we're all able to gather together. Anyone else at this point? It's about five minutes to noon. Again, I wanna thank you all um, for joining us. I know there's been some hiccups um, both with weather and uh, the connection today. Um, we really have enjoyed these virtual forums for the last 13 months. And our plan is to continue to the month of June and then we'll be evaluating as to whether or not we'll go to a little month program. Many of us will be able to travel and meet with each other um, directly and personally uh, over the next six months. That is our, it appears that El Salvador, of all the countries we work in, uh, will be the first one to open up. And uh, Vicky, who's on the call, and I were talking earlier about the possibility of even having an in-person immersion in El Salvador. 
Um, and so we're hopeful that we'll be able to offer that in the course of the next six months and possibly to Italy uh, at year end or the beginning of 2022 as well. Uh, probably be a little bit more time before we're able to travel to Kenya, um, Nepal, India, and some of the other countries. Brazil certainly, as Rodrigo and Noema pointed out a couple of weeks ago, the pandemic there is still in a really difficult and terrible place. Um, I want to thank you all for participating and and Anita, especially for all your hard work in putting today's um, presentation together. And as Mahesh decided to remember all of our staff and volunteers, particularly in the countries that are most affected by COVID still at this time. Um, and gratitude really, as Mahesh said, and you know, he didn't mention himself, but it's also true for him, um, putting yourselves at such great risk uh, to serve your neighbors and even folks you don't know um, in your own communities. I want to thank again Ilsa, especially as um, tomorrow is her 15th anniversary, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, nothing that I or IPM has been able to accomplish over the past 15 years without her. And I'd like to uh, turn it over to her briefly at this time um, so she can share a little bit with you about our plans for the rest of the month. Um, and uh, thank you, Ilsa, and thank you, Anita. Thank you for joining us on the call today. So, uh, join now, or are you still no, <laughs> technology uh, challenged as well? I am still technology challenged, but um, thank you again. Um, you know, Joe and I are joined at the hip in many ways in terms of our, our work and um, our, where our hearts are located in terms of uh, supporting our project partners and remaining in deep gratitude to all of you. Next week's program, I hope that you will all be able to join us. We will send um, a little bit more information after this, but we look forward to a special program next Friday on June 11th where we will highlight some of the many extraordinary members of the IPM family who have been um, a, an incredible source of inspiration and support and enabled IPM to grow, to dream, to pivot, to reinvent ourselves over the years and um, to really this year celebrate 47 years of unwavering commitment. Um, the following week on the 18th, we'll be joined by Marta Aravera from Colombia. Um, who will be sharing an update more um, personally about the situation there. And then beyond that, we will keep everyone posted of our um, remaining June program. So um, thank you all again for everything you make possible. Thank you, Joe, for your leadership board, for, for your commitment, and to all of the wonderful donors and friends who have really um, allowed us to make the impact that we've been able to make. Thank you all. Thank you, Ilsa, and thank you, Fadi, just shared as well, um, and Mahesh. Uh, it really has been one of the wonderful aspects, uh, if you will, of the pandemic, ability to be together in this way. And um, we're deeply grateful for all of your support and partnership with us. And may the peace that passes all understanding be with you this day, this weekend, and in our work together going forward. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend.